I'm Shiva, and this is The Hollywood Dish. Celebrity gossip can be hot, spicy, sweet, and even sour. Tune in each week as I give you the latest celebrity gossip. Get ready to dish. Happy holidays, everyone. I'm your host, Jan Shiva, and you are watching The Hollywood Dish. There is so much going on in Hollywood right now. Thank you all so much for spending your holiday weekend with me. Now, let's start our show. Believe it or not, about 40 new shows premiered this season. That is a lot to choose from. It's hard for many of us to commit to investing our time without knowing which shows are going to stick around for longer than a few episodes. Well, it's two months into the season and here are the biggest show hits and misses. Hopefully, this will help you to set your DVRs. Personally, my favorite show this season is This Is Us on NBC. It is a sweet, heartfelt little family show. Its viewership has grown to over 10 million. My favorite character is the father played by Milo Ventimiglia. He really knows how to rock the retro mustache. And you can also still watch long-standing favorite shows like The Big Bang Theory on CBS. It's good. it's just good, clean, nerdy fun. And Empire on Fox has come back stronger than ever. I just can't get enough of Taraji P. Henson as Cookie. It is still the number two show on television. Other new shows getting high ratings marks are Bull on CBS and Designated Survivor on ABC starring Kiefer Sutherland. Both shows have already been signed on to get full seasons along with American Housewife on ABC and MacGyver on CBS. Meanwhile, HBO is the biggest winner of the season. Sarah Jessica Parker's show Divorce got some pretty lackluster reviews, but it is already rivaling other HBO shows, Girls and Veep, in ratings. But my hands down favorite show by far is HBO's Westworld. It is a futuristic science fiction roller coaster with tons of plot twists to keep viewers guessing from episode to episode. It already has more viewers than Game of Thrones had in its first season, which is pretty awesome. Now, let's take a look at some of the shows that are not getting any viewer love this season. Notorious on ABC is proving to be the biggest disappointment of the season. It's basically a bad knockoff of a Shonda Rhimes show. Also, Pure Genius on CBS and Conviction on ABC have both been big flops along with No Tomorrow and Frequency, which are both on the CW. Did I leave anything out? Let me know which shows you have been watching this season and had you hooked. The Golden Globe nominations are in. There were some happy surprises and a few snubs as well. It's time to cheer on the best of the best in Hollywood. Actors Don Cheadle, Laura Dern, and Anna Kendrick announced this year's Golden Globe nominations. But before I mention the lucky honorees, I can't ignore the shocking snubs. Denzel Washington, grabbed a Best Actor nomination for Fences. However, the 61-year-old who also directed the film was shut out of the Best Director category. Another surprising turn of events was Mel Gibson's Hacksaw Ridge receiving more nominations with a total of three 
than Fences, which only received two nominations. But Fences still made out better than Martin Scorsese's latest film, Silence, which received no Golden Globe consideration. Tom Hanks was also snubbed for his role as Sully, as was Emily Blunt for The Girl on the Train. Taraji P. Henson was also overlooked for her role in Hidden Figures. Now, let's go on to the happy surprises. Ryan Reynolds grabbed a nomination for his role as Deadpool. He will face off against another Ryan, Ryan Gosling, for his role in La La Land in the category of Best Actor in a Comedy. Emma Stone also scored a nomination for her role in La La Land as well. As for TV, it was no surprise that The People vs. O.J. Simpson raked in five nominations. Fan faves Veep and Blackish are both nominated for Best Comedy. In the Best Drama Series category, there were some new entries this year. This Is Us on NBC and Stranger Things on Netflix are shaking things up. It's sure to be an interesting night. And award season rolls on with the SAG Award nomination announcements. Common and Sophia Bush announced the 23rd annual SAG Award nominees this year, it's an all-out battle of the co-stars for the win. Emily Blunt and Amy Adams were not only longtime friends, but they were also former co-stars, and now they are current rivals. Both actresses are nominated for outstanding performance by a female in a leading role alongside Emma Stone, Natalie Portman, and Meryl Streep. 16 years ago, Denzel Washington was schooling Ryan Gosling on the football field in Remember the Titans. Now, these two are going head to head for the best actor in a leading role. Viola Davis and Octavia Spencer came together for The Help back in 2011. Now, they are battling out for the best female actor in a supporting role. Even though Stranger Things have happened, current co-stars Millie Bobby Brown and Winona Ryder are facing off in the category for Female Actress in a Drama Series. As for Best Male Actor in a TV Movie or Limited Series, the FX fight is on between The People vs. O.J. Simpson co-stars Sterling K. Brown and Courtney B. Vance. In the category of Best Male in a Comedy, former co-stars Anthony Anderson and Ty Burrell are facing off. And for the ladies, Grace and Frankie co-stars Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin are going head to head. But they may have to wrestle the statue away from two-time winner Uzo Aduba. Win or lose, I'm sure everyone is thrilled just to be nominated. Just when you thought 2016 could not get any worse, I have some very tragic news to report. Alan Thicke has passed away. He was TV's most beloved dad. There was an outpouring of love in Hollywood after the tragic death of Growing Pain star Alan Thicke. He was without question one of TV's most beloved fathers. His sudden passing has left Hollywood stunned. From the very beginning until the untimely end, it was all about family both on and off screen for Alan Thicke. Allen was playing hockey with his youngest son Carter at Pickwick Ice Rink in Burbank, California when he suddenly collapsed on the ice. Some of Hollywood's biggest stars are paying their respects to the beloved actor who died suddenly at age 69. The Canadian-born star loved hockey, an eyewitness stated that Allen was in great spirits before he fell ill. His 19-year-old son was by his side as he suffered an apparent heart attack. 
Alan Thick was rushed to the Providence St. Joseph Medical Center, which is just five minutes from the ice rink. However, emergency personnel could not save him. Alan rose to television icon status as the quintessential all-American dad in the 80s thanks to his role as Jason Seaver on the show Growing Pains. The show provided early career breaks for both Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. Upon hearing the news of Alan's passing, Leo posted on Facebook, quote, I miss him already. When Alan Thicke walked in the room, quite frankly, no one was cooler. On Instagram, singer Robin Thicke called his father his best friend. Sources say the singer is devastated by the loss. Alan was married three times. He leaves behind his wife, his three sons, and his grandchildren. Explosive fighting and a terrifying gun incident. This is definitely not your typical storyline when you tune in to HDTV for home decorating tips. But that is just what happened in real life for the stars of the show Flip or Flop. Tarek and Christina Almusa met at a real estate office years ago when they were both in their early 20s. But now the married couple has announced their shocking split. They were the super hip couple flipping homes and looking for bank. The show was a ratings winner for HDTV, but now there is trouble in TV paradise. The flip or flop stars have separated after seven years of marriage. A source says that Tarek and Christina have had challenges over the years. The couple tried to go to counseling to sort out their relationship issues, but have decided to separate while they reevaluate the future of their marriage. Six months ago, the couple had an unfortunate misunderstanding and the police were called to their home. There was no violence and no charges were filed. However, authorities in Orange County have confirmed that in May, deputies responded to a call to deal with, quote, a possibly suicidal male with a gun. A witness says he saw Tarek run to out the back door of his home and onto a hiking trail. Christina then came running out, crying and shaking. She told the witness that Tarek took a handgun, put it in his backpack, and ran outside. Deputies later found Tarek, who complied with their demands. Christina goes on record saying that Tarek did not make any threatening statements about hurting himself or anyone else. She also denied that he has been suicidal. Tarek told the police that he wanted to, quote, blow off some steam and that he took the gun for safety because of wildlife in the area. The couple has two small children, Taylor, who is six, and Brandon, who is one. Christina and Tarek have faced their share of challenges over the years. Two years ago, Tarek was diagnosed and treated for thyroid cancer. Christina has suffered a miscarriage in the past. The couple has also been under fire for allegedly misleading buyers in their flipping courses. The Almusas have issued a statement saying that they plan on continuing their professional life together. People Magazine reports that the couple has lived apart for months and are dating others. Love might not cost a thing, but divorce certainly does. How much are these famous female celebrities paying out to their exes? Hint, hint, it's a lot. When love goes wrong, it can be expensive. Some of the top women in Hollywood have paid the price for love. Game of Thrones star Lena Headey is battling her ex, Peter LeBrand, for custody of their children. Peter just filed documents asking the court to have Lena pay all his legal fees since he claims she makes over a million dollars an episode 
on her hit HBO show. Another bitter custody fight led to Halle Berry paying her ex, Gabriel Aubrey, $16,000 a month in child support. She also had to pay $415,000 in retroactive support payments. Breakups are messy. As JLo learned in 2003, when it was reported that she paid $14 million to her ex, Chris Judd, in their divorce settlement. Britney Spears had to pay her ex-husband, Kevin Federline, $20,000 a month in child support. And love can go wrong for even the biggest music icons. Case in point, Janet Jackson is reported to have reached a settlement somewhere between $10 to $20 million with her music producer ex, Rene Elizondo, back in 2000. And Madonna ended her marriage to Guy Ritchie in 2008 with one of the biggest payoffs of all. It is reported that the singer settled with her ex for $60 million. Ouch! That is steep. Ah, uh, the royals have it all. Let's take a look inside the palaces and estates that they call home sweet home. It's safe to say that things can't get any better for William and Kate. The Duke and Duchess have a rich life which includes incredible royal real estate. Like most newlyweds, William and Kate started off modestly. The only difference was that their two-bedroom starter home was on the Kensington Palace grounds. In 2013, the couple moved into their official home on the property named Apartment 1A with Baby George. The 17th century home reportedly has 57 rooms and underwent almost $8 million in renovations. The Kensington Palace grounds are also home to other royals. Prince Harry lives there as well, but the royal bachelor only gets a one-bedroom cottage. With the addition of Princess Charlotte, William and Kate are now a family of four. They enjoy living a more ordinary life and now reside at their country home, Amber Hall, full-time. The Georgian-style manor has 10 bedrooms. The secluded estate allows George and Charlotte to play outside like normal kids. The home was a wedding gift given to the Duke and Duchess by Queen Elizabeth. It's a few miles from the Queen's own country estate. The Queen, of course, also calls Windsor Castle home. It's the oldest castle in the world and it has been home to kings and queens for over 1,000 years. But Buckingham Palace is the 90-year-old monarch's most impressive home. It is the largest working palace in the world. Just the balcony alone is historic. The Queen's Palace has 775 rooms and a 40-acre private garden. There is even a helicopter landing pad. That is some royal living. Most people own one home, maybe two if you're lucky. But Taylor Swift has always been an overachiever, so it's only natural that she should own seven. Let's look at T-Swift's awesome real estate. The singer, who just turned 27, has seven homes. That is a total of 39 bedrooms and 43.5 bathrooms combined. In addition, she has more than 21 fireplaces, five pools, and two tennis courts. Taylor's penthouse in Nashville is one of two homes that she has in Tennessee. Taylor also has another pair of residences in Beverly Hills. Taylor needs all of this real estate to house her cats. She collects figurines and owns live felines who have been seen on her Instagram page. The singer-songwriter also loves to collect real estate. She has a gorgeous home in New York City and she owns a $20 million residence 
in Tribeca. There, she throws lavish dinner parties with her fabulous friends like Carly Kloss and Gigi Hadid. You may have seen photos of it on Instagram. Other friends like Blake Lively and Cara Delevingne joined Taylor for an epic 4th of July bash this year at her Rhode Island mansion. This retreat by the beach sits on more than five acres of waterfront property and is valued at over $17 million. And when Taylor throws a party, you know she goes all out. Guys, you have been warned. If you break Taylor Swift's heart, you are going to end up on her hit list. I wonder what Taylor's exes think about the songs that she supposedly wrote about them. Let's break it down lyric by scathing lyric. It seems like Taylor's 2008 breakup song, Forever and Always, is about Joe Jonas. This isn't just a guess. Taylor talked about it on The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Taylor has always said that someday she will find someone who is really, really great for her. But there have been a lot of not so great guys along the way. Take for example, John Mayer. They briefly dated. Then she released her song, Dear John, in 2010. John would later tell Rolling Stone magazine that he didn't do anything to deserve the song and that it was a lousy thing for her to do. Taylor's 2012 mega hit, We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together, is said to be about ex Jake Gyllenhaal. Clues in the music video include the scarf he reportedly gave Taylor as a president and Jake's alleged love of indie music which she also refers to in the song. By 2014, Taylor had released her single, Out of the Woods, which is believed to be about Harry Styles. The big clue in this song is the lyric about paper airplanes. Both Taylor and Harry were spotted wearing paper airplane necklaces in 2012. So who is up next? It could be Calvin Harris or Tom Hiddleston or some other soon to be named ex. But one thing is for sure, Taylor will never run out of musical material. Thanks guys for your lyrical contribution. Imagine a world where Julia Roberts didn't star in Pretty Woman or Leonardo DiCaprio wasn't Jack in Titanic. It's almost too much to bear. Hollywood is full of stories of what might have been. Here is a look at the stars who almost made the cut in some of Hollywood's most memorable roles. Some actors decided to pass on some iconic movie roles. John Travolta decided to walk away from Forrest Gump. Then, to add insult to injury, that year, Tom Hanks won the Oscar for Best Actor for Forrest Gump over John, who was also nominated for Pulp Fiction. Rumor Willis almost snagged the role on Gossip Girl away from Blake Lively. A Gossip Girl casting director recently revealed that the CW wanted rumor for the role on the show that would eventually make Blake Lively a star. But rumor admitted to People Magazine that her audition was awful. Pretty Woman catapulted Julia Roberts into superstardom, so it's hard to believe that someone would turn down the role. But that is reportedly just what Molly Ringwald did. I can't imagine anyone other than Julia Roberts playing that character. And we all know that Jack and Rose are Leo and Kate, but there was a time when it was almost Matthew and Gwyneth. Matthew McConaughey revealed that he auditioned for the role of Jack in Titanic, but he didn't get it. And Gwyneth Paltrow reportedly turned down the role that made Kate Winslet a massive star. Gwyneth also said no to the role of Roller Girl, played by Heather Graham in Boogie Nights. But everything worked out just fine for everyone in the end. So 
I guess we all win. And that's a wrap on our show for tonight, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Tell me what you think about your favorite celebrities. I hope you have an entertaining and newsworthy week. Good night, and I'll see you next time. I'm Shiva, and this is The Hollywood Dish. Celebrity gossip can be hot, spicy, sweet, and even sour. Tune in each week as I give you the latest celebrity gossip. Get ready to dish. <laughs>